So in this video, we're going to be talking about what brings Athens to the point of engaging in this radical experiment in democracy. Um, so uh, in the previous video, we were talking about the reforms of Solon, which open up Athenian society, and uh, it, the, the, the two things that are of, of equal importance here in a way, Solon's emphasis on making uh, Athens a, a power commercially, and at the same time in, in making it a unified society uh, that can function as an effective uh, commercial hub. Um, the the success of the of the trading economy uh, is it cannot be solely in the hands of the Aristoines. So Solon's uh, uh, genius, in a way, is uh, is in, is is in seeing and in insisting that the the strength of Athens that will benefit everybody. Um, comes from a broader control, a broader participation economically, uh, and uh, broader participation politically goes hand in hand with this in shifting the uh, the potency of Athenian society away from the hands of a few clans towards the the strengths and uh, and capabilities and and willingness and drive of this most much broader range of people, uh, and so. Uh, uh, the the Solon's uh, um, reforms are, even though they are, you know, uh, uh, grumbled about and resented by the, you know, by the ultra conservatives, by the people uh, at the very top of society, even they are willing to see that Athens becomes a a stronger trading hub, a stronger potency, and and this gives them greater influence socially and culturally over the rest of of Hellas. Um, which is also beneficial to them in terms of the, of pride, prestige, and standing, the influence that Athens has, uh, and the the ability of Athens to gain uh, a a kind of hegemony. The uh, um, the Spartans have a military hegemony, a a preeminence amongst equals in 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 their military expertise and in their ability to potentially defend. Uh, the Aegean world against um, you know outsiders. Uh, the Spartans are valued for this, but uh, what emerges out of the the growth of archaic Athens is the the possibility of of uh, Athens having a different kind of hegemony, uh, a, a, a a a a commercial hegemony, um, an economic hegemony, but also a cultural hegemony. The uh, as Athenian society opens up, both with the changes that come with uh, the emphasis of expression uh, of the archaic period and the, the the changes that take place in the Athenian social structure, as Athens opens up. Uh, uh, it uh, it it finds uh, value in a, a multiplicity of expression, a a, uh, a a a a understanding that arete can be achieved along multiple paths, and that all of these forms of of achievement and and drive, uh, all of these all of these pursuits. Of excellence are of benefit to Athens as a whole, and so as a result, uh, um, the the heterogeneity, the the diversity of Athenian society, um, you know, both vertically and horizontally, um, you know, uh, across uh, social class and across its uh, the, the 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 territory of Attica and the the burgeoning forms of of wealth and trade, uh, and um, you know, the interplay with. With outsiders and the presence of, of resident aliens called medics, uh, all of these things uh, 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 bring about different kinds of change that come together to make Athens stronger, more influential. All of this is a positive. All of this drives uh, a desire for more change, a desire to to push in this direction toward the achievement of an ideal society along an Athenian model. And this is one of the roots of the. Um, the dynamic between Athens and uh, uh, other more conservative states, uh, Sparta in the extreme, but also places like uh, Argos and, and Thebes. Um, this also creates a rivalry between Athens and Corinth, because Athens uh, it, it comes to overtake Corinth's preeminence as a commercial power. Corinth has the advantage of, Corinth is situated on an isthmus, that uh, gives it access both to the Corinthian Sea, which allows it to trade west into the Adriatic, 
uh, and uh, with the um, with the Etruscans uh, and Italians uh, of Italy and east into the Aegean. Uh, so Corinth has always fancied itself as being the the preeminent uh, commercial uh, uh, polis. Uh, Athens is striving to um, to overtake it, brings about a powerful and and uh, and and uh, uh, and um, difficult and rancorous rivalry between Athens and Corinth, which is the other, you know, uh, developing factor, one of the other fuses that leads into the Peloponnesian War. Uh, after Solon, there is another um, uprising of the common people uh, in, in which uh, Pesistratus takes uh, uh, takes uh, control of Athens as a tyrant. Once again, it's important to emphasize that tyrants in Greek history refer to champions of the people. Um, uh, somebody like Pesistratus is already popular amongst the populace and uh, um, is is called upon, you know, to to seize power on behalf of the people against an, a, an aristocracy uh, becoming more. Uh, oppressive. So the the advent of Pesistratus is is a, signifies both that the people are feeling a you know a, a desire and a need and an ability to to take power for themselves, and the the Aristoi are, are feeling this as well, are are afraid of the populace and have been pushing them down in order to try to prevent this, uh, which has the effect of instigating such an uprising. So Pesistratus takes takes power uh, and uh, and makes himself a leader uh, with the agenda of helping the common people uh, and um, and repressing the aristoi. The uh, one of the things that is is also often true of a tyrant, and this is d definitely true of, of Pesistratus, is that tyrants uh, tend to uh, be. Uh, tend to patronize uh, art and artistic expression, and so there's a great deal of building and uh, and development of Athens, and a great deal of of, of proliferation of of artistic expression, uh, public sculptures and uh, frescoes and um, uh, the the buildings of new kinds of of, of constructions, temples and and uh, stolas and so forth. And and uh, the the patronage of of poetry performances and uh, or you know what is eventually going to become uh, the uh, uh, Athenian drama, all of these things are, are flourish under Pesistratus and this makes him even more popular. Uh, so much so that uh, he is able to pass on his tyranny to his uh, sons. The legends are a little bit unclear. We don't have a lot of direct testimony about this, so it's not clear whether you know both of his sons, Hippias and Hipparchus, uh, 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 rule jointly as tyrants after um, after Pesistratus. What's really important about this is that the uh, the rule of, of Pesistratus's sons, the tyranny comes to a sudden end with assassination, and in this time of turmoil, you know, the assassination itself is actually romantic romantically motivated, but it, uh, it, it uh, generates an opportunity for a counter-strike by the conservative elite, um, and um, the conservative elite in Athens uh, solicits Spartan intervention on behalf of oligarchy. And this is what's a huge mistake, because however, you know, whatever uh, divide the uh, the Athenians are experiencing amongst themselves, whatever conflicts and and uh, opposition of 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 you know party politics you might say um, is 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 in, is creating such turmoil in Athens, uh, the. Um, the 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 appeal of the uh, of the conservative elite to the Spartans to come in and physically intervene and place the um, the the uh, the Aristoi in power to establish an oligarchy um, is uh, is viewed universally as betrayal by the Athenian ultra conservative elite and results in a extremely powerful backlash the uh, ultra conservative elite lose all credibility and the people that come to power are you know are the radicals who uh, are in favor of empowering the people once and for all of creating reforms that establish the the a rule by the people 
um, and with every effort to eliminate control by the aristocracy once, once and for all. The agent of this is a man named Cleisthenes. And so Cleisthenes, Cleisthenes uh, um, you know, comes to power as an archon and, and establishes a series of reforms which complete Athens' uh, um, you know, mutation into a unique uh, radical democracy, the only one of its kind in the entire ancient world. The, uh, the reforms of Cleisthenes are uh, ingenious uh, and uh, are a culmination of all of these things that we've talked about uh, involving the breaking of local identity in favor of a central universal identity, uh, the getting rid of the tribes, which I mentioned uh, was uh, the, the tribes tend to be geographic and therefore local, therefore involving kinship ties, uh, the, the the tribes are done away with, and with it to the you know the the fratry associations of the ancient tribes, and instead uh, the you know, so, uh, uh, Cleisthenes establishes a a new the word constitution um, just as an aside. Um, there's no such thing as a written constitution in the ancient world. The constitution of the United States has that's this written document, we can look at the actual words and so forth, is the written constitution of the United States is the first one in human history. Um, before this, what we mean by constitution, especially in the ancient world, is the, the body of customs and traditions and precedents that determine uh, how things are done in the, in the political state. And so the reforms of Cleisthenes involve a new set of traditions, a new set of, of precedents going forward, which are um, which involve two basic principles. One is the new, you know, organizing characteristic. Uh, the tribes are now randomly distributed across Attica, and that means that the tribes are meaningless for uh, for local identity. The tribes consist only as a conduit of your identity toward the Athenian state. Uh, and second is a dependence upon the lot, on random selection of, of, of individual citizens to accomplish most of the, uh, of the actions of government. Uh, this includes both participation in the political state and participation in the justice system. In other words, uh, the lot determines both uh, who is organizing and administering Athens uh, and who is, uh, um, who is serving on the, the very large juries that become established at this time to administer justice in, in, uh, in criminal and civil cases. And so uh, this sortition, the sortition becomes uh, the principle. We're looking at uh, you know, a, what's left of a, a device that was used to, uh, to spit out um, you know, tokens associated with, uh, with random citizens from each of the ten tribes. Uh, the uh, the principle of sortition was used to attempt to eliminate the uh, the effect of influence, the effect of family, the effect of um, you know aristocracy and blood, and even wealth and the participation in both uh, politics and society. And so the Athenian democracy is set up like this: there's a citizen assembly. A uh, citizen assembly has a quorum of, of 6,000 people, uh, and uh, you know, it is the citizen body that decides all of the things that are, uh, that, uh, that are the responsibility of the state. Now, uh, whenever there's a, there's a citizen assembly, it's important to look at whether this is, a, what determines whether it's a democracy is, is um, who is setting the agenda for the assembly, who is writing the laws that are put before the assembly that are voted up and down. And so even before this, Athens had a citizen assembly, but the, the agenda and the laws were being determined by um, the, the elite, by the council of, of the Areopagus, the council of 400, uh, which was controlled by the uppermost clans. By now, this has been done away with. And instead, the boule, the council, is, uh, is determined by lot from amongst the ten uh, uh, new tribes of Cleisthenes. Uh, and so the, uh, uh, the, the boule is, uh, 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 is made up of essentially random citizens, and uh, the you know each of the ten tribes 
uh, you know, is uh, sort of takes the uh, takes the you know the steering of the boule by turn. Uh, but uh, all of this, is, you know, the the boule determines the laws that are put before the assembly and uh, takes care of the things that the assembly has decided to do. Uh, there are archons, and again, instead of um, the archons being, you know, elected from amongst the most elite of the clans, the archons are again chosen by lot, and they serve for one year, and they help to uh, take care of the day-to-day -day, uh, maintenance of the city, and uh, so forth and so on. Uh, and then we run into you know the problem where there are certain kinds of things that you don't want to be taken care of by any random citizen one of this is uh, governance of how the city goes to war and so there is a provision for the for for there to be boards of ten for each tribe to choose one of its own to serve on boards that are made up of people with some experience in uh, in the in the uh, the matter at hand the most uh, prominent of these is the uh, the board of, of strategoi, the board of generals that is in charge of the um, the formation and execution of Athenian military policy. And what's different about this is that uh, the the because there's a limited number of people with this kind of experience and expertise, uh, the the you can serve. On, uh, you can be re-elected year after year to the board of Strategoi. The effect that this has is everything else about the Athenian state is, uh, is, is made up of all these random anonymous faces. And while this is perfect for democracy, it tends to be disconcerting for the citizen body. They have nothing to cling to except the, the, uh, the abstract concept of democracy itself, um, there is a there is a a comforting factor in in seeing an anchor and seeing uh, a a a pillar of of the of of the community that you can have a, a faith in. While you know, for the Athenians, to, to a certain extent, this is served by the Athenian populace, by Athena herself, but as the 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 importance of the of the direct uh, uh, involvement of the gods diminishes with the extent to which people are taking power for themselves, uh, no more so than in Athens. Uh, this means that uh, even the uh, even the role of Athena is is reduced, uh, and the the vacuum is filled by prominent figures on the board of Strategoi because uh, these figures can. Uh, can stay in office for year after year. They become familiar faces, and you know, against all the principles of radical Athenian democracy, they can accumulate a kind of behind-the-scenes influence as somebody who has been a fixture in government, you know, for you know five years, ten years, twenty years, thirty years. Uh, um, even though they don't have political power, the you know, a member of the board of Strategoi, all that they. Uh, the only power that they have is is uh, to help uh, be one member of ten people that uh, that help to to fix military policy. They don't have any official political power in the constitution. What they do have is the is the subjective authority that comes from uh, a a a permanence that breeds preeminence. And this is why uh, the the golden age of Athenian democracy has. These uh, these 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 faces of men that uh, that stand before it, um, it, it you know the uh, uh, most prominently in the fifth century Themistocles Cleon and especially Pericles and so you know the 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 age of, of great Athenian democracy is most associated you know you can't fix it in your head with these faceless masses but you can fix it on the the face of Pericles and the Athenians do this for themselves. Um, Pericles doesn't rule Athens. Pericles doesn't have power, um, but he does have this this accumulated uh, uh, reputation, this accumulated uh, informal authority that makes him a figure who's consulted, who makes him you know an expert on Athenian government, who makes who who makes him a kind of unofficial 
uh, uh, leader and guide to the Athenian state, especially when crisis comes at the advent of the Peloponnesian War. And so the other thing to consider is, so first of all, um, you know, the, the danger of democracy comes in this, this problem that you have, that democracy leaves you without a, uh, a pure democracy as practiced by the Athenians, leaves you without the, you know, this kind of, of, of um, trust-inspiring central figure uh, that can be served by, you know, prominent uh, politicians or, you know, kings or, you know, presidents or, you know, whatever. Um, uh, the Athenians have nothing of this, and, and it creates problems. Uh, the second thing is that, um, uh, uh, is that, uh, that uh, democracy breeds a sort of, what the, if you studied American history, you might have encountered uh, the, the, the phrase of the Federalists, the tyranny of the majority, where the majority can decide things that are beneficial to them, but that are, you know, not so good for, you know, minorities. In other words, democracy sort of assumes that the entire demos has the same needs. And uh, given the fact that, uh, you know, Ath the, the, the polis of Athens is made up of this extremely diverse uh, group of people, you know, starting from the, the coastal and the country people and, and moving on from there, uh, this is a problematic assumption to, to be sure. Another problem is that uh, is that democracy breeds um, um, demagoguery. In other words, when everybody has a say, but not everybody is as well informed, uh, the the ability to speak persuasively brings about uh, uh, factions. Um, that uh, can be personality cults for the people that are are making these speeches that are persuading their followers, and uh, and and so you can end up again. This is all discussed in great detail by the Federalists in the uh, in the in the period of the American uh, after the American Revolution. Uh, you end up with the you know the, the greatest danger of democracy uh, and and mass empowerment being faction and division and stalemate as as factions work against each other and you know demagoguery people gathering the the uh, you know followers to themselves in service of their own glory but pretending to be uh, seeking the benefit of uh, of the people that are that are following them. Uh, so democracy tends to make this possible. In the case of Athens, it also opens up a market for sophistry, a market for learning how to speak persuasively regardless of the facts. And uh, this will come to be extremely important to us in coming discussions and is one of the main reasons why The Clouds, which we'll be reading later, uh, uh, was written. So uh, as you're thinking about this, this uh, you know, um, constant mutation that, are, that results in radical democracy for Athens, think about the, uh, the ways in which Athens opens itself up to new problems by uh, um, bringing itself to, this, uh, uh, to indulge in this radical experiment, and uh, more on this to come. That's that.